Hello everybody. Welcome to Obstetrics and Gynecology Basics to Resign for Postgraduates. And today's uh, topic of uh, discussion is prescribing progestogens. Aim of today's presentation is to know what are the various types of progestogens or how do we classify progestogens and how to select a particular progestogen for a given scenario. These are the various scenarios and we need to select a particular type of progestogen as at present if you see market is flooded with so many various types of progestogens and even we can see here that indications are also equally so there is so much of diversity in that also right from pregnancy contraception and suddenly we have a young girl coming with PCOS or you have infertility endometriosis and endometrial hyperplasia carcinoma so right from adolescent age group to postmenopausal age group when we are prescribing progestogens and that and that too there are so many preparations for each indication and that is why i have selected this topic prescribing progestogens so that as a postgraduate student it will help you to understand which one to prescribe as well as to understand why your consultants are prescribing particular progestogen uh, it, it is prescribed as a progestogen alone or it might be prescribed in uh, more commonly in association with the estrogen so combination estrogen progestogen preparations are more commonly used to select a proper progestogen what we need to understand is what is what are the various ways of classifying these progestogens and there are two ways we classify the progestogens. One is a structural classification and other is a generational classification. So let us see what is there in the structural as the name suggests structural classification is mainly related to the uh, structure of the molecule of a given preparation. So here we have six total six groups are there and uh, out of which the first is a progesterone natural progesterone or micronized progesterone now commonly what we use the uh, mainly the micronized progesterone group second now we start now progesterone as i said we whenever we say progesterone it includes natural as well as it includes the synthetic ones so in the synthetic the second group is the pregnancy these were introduced uh, first into the market Generational classification shows these pregnancies as first generation uh, progestogens, and in the pregnancy, we have these three hormones. Second, third group is estrogens, and fourth is gonads. Pregnancy, estrogens, and gonads we should remember as the main three groups, and then you have spironolactone derivative as a fifth group, which has rosperinone in it, that, and retroprogesterone molecule is the diadrogesterone which is commonly we get a preparation as dufastone. Here I have shown that 17 alpha hydroxy progesterone caprioid is a pregnant and we use it as proluton depot. On the other hand, this is a generational classification which is mainly dependent on when these progesterones were introduced into the market. The one which was introduced first is the first generation, then the second, third, fourth and so on. So first generation norethisterone is the first generation, MPA and ciprotiron acetate, these are also first generation, metroxyprogesterone acetate and ciprotiron acetate. Norethisterone is primarily you must be prescribing it so frequently. Now previous uh, oral contraceptive pills had norethisterone, but there was a problem of cycle control. Problem of cycle control means the patients had breakthrough bleeding definition of breakthrough bleeding is whenever a uh, patient is being prescribed taking regularly harm hormonal treatment whatever has been prescribed and in, uh, in spite of taking it regularly she has irregular spotting or minimal bleeding then we call it as a breakthrough bleeding so breakthrough bleeding was common whenever the oral contraceptive preparations had norethisterone in them and so there was a search to see for a better molecule and that resulted into the introduction of levonorgestrel. Levonorgestrel has better cycle control and at present Mala and Maladi if you see being uh, supplied by government of India has levonorgestrel as a component. But with levonorgestrel also main problem is with the liquid metabolism getting adversely affected and increased risk of ischemic heart disease is there 
and that is why there was a surge for one which is a more lipid friendly molecule and so desogestrel was introduced into the market as a third generation progestogen desogestrel also but has some risk of increase uh, ischemic heart disease risk is still there as it still adversely affects the lipid metabolism to some extent as compared to levonorgestrel it is lipid friendly so further search for a better molecule resulted into the introduction of fourth generation fourth generation progestogens you have drosperinone here drosperinone is a spironolactone derivative and dinogest dinogest is a gonine so drosperinone and dinogest these are anti androgenic they have anti anti androgenic action and on the other hand instead of increasing the risk for for ihd they are reducing the risk that means they are cardio protective so first is a pregnant group of progestogens where i have already said three molecules are there metroxy progesterone acetate 17 alpha hydroxy progesterone caproate and ciprotinone acetate now all these are not effective in ovulation inhibition now inhibition of the ovulation is the main mechanism of action of all the contraceptive pills and because these are not leading to the effectively inhibiting the ovulation these that is mainly the medroxy progesterone acetate is not included if you observe all forms of oral contraceptive preparations medroxy progesterone acetate is not there and the main reason is it is it has a weaker action against ovulation inhibition it is not suppressing lh surge that is why there is a, a less uh, ovulation inhibition and escape ovulations do occur with that also so that is why it is commonly used in abnormal trend bleeding and not as a contraceptive all this pregnancy remember pregnant not for contraception if you remember that much that will be clear to you injectable medroxy progesterone acetate as we call it call it as depot medroxy progesterone acetate it is available 150 mg it is given every 3 months but with that if it is given for more than 1 year remember that there can be osteoporosis so what we are worried about is development of osteoporosis if it is given for more, a prolonged time and that is why it is mainly been used as a contraceptive during lactation it is also used in endometriosis as a cheaper option as compared to the newer progestogens which are expensive 17 alpha hydroxy progesterone caprate is used in pregnancy as cases of threat and abortion or preterm labor but the current evidence is not strong enough in other words there are no sufficient randomized control trials to show its efficacy mainly for the favorable outcome of the pregnancy in cases of treated abortion recurrent pregnancy loss or preterm labor ciprotinone acetate it has it is a pregnant which has a very strong anti androgenic action and that is why it is given in combination with the ethinyl estradiol in whenever a patient's presentation is acne or hirsutism but remember again that it is also not going to lead to the suppression of ovulation so escape ovulation can occur so that means we need to prescribe some additional contraceptive we need to add some additional contraceptive advice has to be given whenever the woman is on ciprotinone acetate mainly for uh, hyperandrogenic uh, symptoms such as acne hirsutism hair loss now next group these two groups are together i have taken these two groups estrains and gonines these these we we can see and together the reason is all both of these are 19 nor testosterone derivatives so 19 nor testosterone if it's testosterone that means it has to have androgenic side effects so both these groups have androgenic side effects are still there so in the previous ones that is older ones gonines but the newer ones are having less and less androgenic side effect these are effectively suppressing the ovulation and that is why these are the ideal drugs to be used for contraception that is why they they are being i have, I have taken them on the same slide that these are mostly used in whatever oral contraceptive pills we have now estrins as i said they were previously used but because of a poor cycle control now they are only used for acute aub it comes as 5 mg tablet primarily you must all be prescribing 
and if there is a heavy menstrual bleeding patient comes you might be giving it one tablet three times a day or even two tablet three set three times a day till the bleeding stops and then you taper off the dose for postponement for postponement of the menses also you need to give it for a short duration around 10 to 15 days you need to start it at least three days before the expected day of uh, menstruation and that is why it is also commonly used uh, norethestrone as effective drug for postponement of menses it is first generation breakthrough bleeding occurs so it is replaced by gonades now in the gonades the first one is levonorgestrel it is a second generation progestogen and if you are asked which is the most commonly commonly used progestogen at present all over the world it is levonorgestrel it is not only used for the as a in the combination of with the estrogen as combined oral contraceptive pill but only levonorgestrel only emergency pill is also uh, use, being used commonly in emergency pills also it is the drug of choice levonorgestrel it is present in mala and maladi also and you have levonorgestrel releasing intrauterine cysteine it is called as this lng ius now it is called as a medical hysterectomy it is that effective in patients with abnormal fluid bleeding as well as it is a very effective contraceptive so levonorgestrel has better cycle control as compared to norethesterone then you have we have desogestrel which is a third generation and dynogest which is a fourth generation so all these are the gonins these three gonins you should remember levonorgestrel desogestrel and dynogest now this table in short gives us the idea and i liked i like it a lot and that is why i have taken it from the textbook that here at a glance we can see how the comparative analysis of how much is a progestational action of commonly used whatever preparations we are using or how much is the androgenic action and how much is the anti androgenic action so as we can see here you can see levonorgestrel is very strong as far as progestational action goes but unfortunately its andro androgenic action is almost double to that of uh, this norethesterone desogestrel or even methoxyprogesterone acetate they also are having some androgenic side effects but these are maximum with the levonorgestrel that is why uh, the search for third generation and fourth generation progestogens has taken place there is anti androgenic action progesterone naturally has uh, anti androgenic action similarly dynogest and drospirinone have anti androgenic action and the, the drug which has the maximum anti androgenic action is ciprotrione acetate it is 3 so it is 3 times to that of uh, progest natural progesterone it has a very strong anti um, androgenic action here i have also given the uh, dose doses of various preparations also so that we remember even or just 0.15 mg desogestrel 0.75 mg dynogest is 2 mg similarly ciprotrione is also 2 mg whereas rospirinone is 3 mg methoxyprogesterone uh, acetate tablet is available as 10 mg and usually it is given twice a day what are the progestogens used in pregnancy we have three number one is micronized progesterone and uh, in in that vaginal is more effective as compared to the oral and uh, number 2 is dihydrogesterone now dihydrogesterone it is used spe specially as a luteal support in cases of infertility because it never affects the ovulation the main advantage is it is not affect so you have done ovulation induction and you are worried about the progesterone deficiency leading to recurrent pregnancy loss then the drug or in idiopathic recurrent pregnancy loss also drug of choice nowadays is dihydrogesterone or dufastone though it is expensive it is being used very frequently especially in with in cases of recurrent pregnancy loss 10 mg the dose is 10 mg tablet is there 17 alpha hydroxy progesterone caproate i have given here a question mark the reason is at present the evidence there is a poor evidence whether it is effective in all these indications of treated abortion rp recurrent pregnancy loss or prevention of preterm labor 
it is available but still it is being used as 250 milligram or 500 milligram intramuscular injection on a weekly basis so these are some indications patient comes to you with acute aub you can use norethisterone for a longer duration management of AUB for three to six cycles, you can use medroxyprogesterone acetate or oral contraceptive pills, and you will prefer the pills containing newer, newer progesterogens. Though, but remember that these are costly patient affordability it depends on affordability of the patient. PCOS endometriosis will prefer dinoges, rosperinone, which are again because these are cardioprotective. Usually, we need to give it for a longer duration. And you do not want to increase uh, metabolic effect adverse action on the lipid or carbohydrate metabolism also acne ursodism then severe case first choice will be ciprotron acetate otherwise here also we can use rosperinone or dinoges patient is young obese woman and you are worried about the estrogenic side effects then you go for a lower dose of the uh, ethyl study or 20 microgram which is which we call it as ultra low dose so if it is um, 20 microgram it is ultra low dose whereas low dose pills low dose pills when do you call it as low dose depends on how much is the ethyl estradiol so if it ethyl estradiol is 30 micrograms then it is low dose pill if it is 20 it is ultra low dose so now preparations are in the market where Familon, low aid, where the ethyl estradiol dose is less, it is 20 micrograms. And uh, there are certain preparations where now lower dose is used and the tablet, the number of tablets has increased. It is from 21, they, are, they have increased it to 24, which gives better cycle control and as well as efficacy is also improved. In pregnancy, we have three micronized progesterone, dihydrogesterone, that is dufasterone, or seventeen alpha hydroxy progesterone, caproate, that is proleotone. So this is in nutshell, we, you can select depending on the patient's affordability. For these various indications, we have a choice with us, and out of these two, three progesterones, we can select depending on the main factor. It comes is affordability of the patient whenever you want to give it for months together. Now, this is uh, the last slide and I have included it as my mind map. I want mainly to introduce this concept of mind map to the postgraduate students. This is my mind map of this uh, topic that is prescribing progestogens or the types of progestogens or you can say progestogen hormonal therapy. So, I have selected star as a design here as you can see. And the, because mainly we know that there are six groups, six main groups are there and that is why I have selected the star. And as you can see the at the top three, I have the, here there is a progesterone group, then pregnant group and retro progesterone that is dufasterone. I have selected these at the top because these are the ones which are not used as contraceptives but these are mainly used in AUB or pregnancy. On the other hand, estrain, it is more commonly been used again in the AUB, but gonins and this spironolactone, these are the drugs which are dominating the market at present, being used as oral contraceptive preparations. And especially those who are which are having disogestrel or these are having dinogest in it, or those who which are uh, having a drosperinone, though these are expensive, you can Imagine the levonorgestrel preparation might be available in 50 to 100 rupees, whereas these are around 500 rupees also some market preparation. So there is so much of a jump in the cost per month for the patient. But apart from that, it is anti-androgenic. These are the preparations cardioprotective and so more and more perimenopausal women with possibility of metabolic syndrome. You do not want to have the uh, androgenic or metabolic side effects. Then what you select is either drosperinone or Diagnosed. So that is how I have prepared. Now, why I have said this is my mind map is each the mind map for each person is might be might differ because it is at a glance whatever I want to retain related to this topic. So that I will if I have to uh, write uh, even a theory question, I will then develop on this line only. These are the six groups. 
why i have included the dosage here is it is sometimes difficult or confusing to remember all these doses so if i write like that there is a link that dynogest is also 2 mg ciprotron is also 2 mg like that i can keep on remembering even disogestrin 0.75 mg whereas i know lng whenever it is used as a emergency pill is also 0.75 so that similarities uh, stand out and it helps us to memorize the things which which we find difficult so this is for emergency contraception so you uh, my request to all the project post graduates is you also try to make uh, whatever topic you read even for a smaller uh, topic also you can make your make your own mind maps save them in a folder or make a diary of mind maps so that whenever you want to appear for practical examination or for theory examination just one day prior two days prior you can go through it and that will help you a lot for mem to memorize whatever you find more difficult to retain in your memory thank you so much your feedback from you is uh, most welcome and if you are interested in having more topics like this please let me know in the comment box thanks a lot